Just this week, the University of Maryland and the Washington Post released new polling showing that 25 percent of Americans say it is probably or definitely true that January 6th was an inside job instigated by the FBI. Now, I can't believe I have to say this, but just in case some Fox viewer got stuck on MSNBC while trying to change channels and their remote just ran out of batteries, January 6th was not an inside job instigated by the FBI. Okay, now you can change the channel. There's zero evidence of that. But 25% of America believes it anyway. 34% of Republicans, if you want to look at it that way. 34%, more than a third of Republicans, believe it was an FBI inside job. What makes this all the more daunting is that sentimental, sentiments like these are getting more popular. In 2021, 27% of Republicans blamed Donald Trump for the events of January 6th. Now, after the House January 6th hearings, after Trump has been indicted multiple times for crimes he allegedly committed that day and leading up to it, now... About half that number, only 14% of Republicans, blame Donald Trump for January 6th. And Trump himself has embraced January 6th. He's reclaimed that narrative as his own. He kicked off the first rally of his 2024 campaign last year with this, a song he recorded with a group of inmates imprisoned because of their actions on January 6th. That's some weird stuff. Tonight in Iowa, Trump again repeated the lie, telling a crowd of supporters at a campaign event that there was Antifa, there was FBI, there were a lot of people there, too, leading the charge, his words. But what cognitive dissonance this is. What a gap between Trump's narrative and reality. Tonight, President Biden gives the first major address of his 2024 campaign. On the eve of the three-year anniversary of the January 6th attack on our Capitol, Biden spoke just miles away from Valley Forge, where George Washington mobilized troops nearly three centuries ago in the Revolutionary War. The president framed this election as just as much of a fight for our nation's democracy as Washington's was back then. To Biden, this election is a fight between truth and lies, and the stakes in that fight are as high as they can be. To Biden, this is about the future of our democracy itself. When the attack on January 6th happened, there was no doubt about the truth. At the time, even Republican members of Congress and Fox News commentators publicly and privately condemned the attack. As one Republican senator said, Trump's behavior was embarrassing and humiliating for the country. But now that same senator and those same people have changed their tune. As time has gone on, gone on, politics, fear, money, all have intervened. And now these MAGA voices who know the truth about Trump on January 6th have abandoned the truth and abandoned the democracy. They made their choice. Now the rest of us, Democrats, independents, mainstream Republicans, we have to make our choice. I know mine. And I believe I know America's. Joining me now is Tim Snyder, history professor at Yale University, author of On Tyranny, 20 Lessons from the 20th Century. Uh, professor Snyder, good to see you. Um, you helped us understand in the early days after this uh, January 6th insurrection, this concept of the big lie, the idea that regardless of whether we have evidence and you can see it yourself in 2023 much better than you could in the 1930s and the 1940s, regardless of that, if someone lies enough about something, about how the election went or what happened on January 6th, people can come to believe it. History shows us that. And what we have watched in the last two years is exactly what you warned us of what would happen. Yeah, I mean, the, the important thing is the scale of the lie. You tell a lie that's so big that people can live inside it. You tell a lie that's so big that people would, won't believe that you would deceive them on that scale. You have to be a certain kind of person to do that with a certain kind of motivation. And unfortunately, we now have a politician like that in the form of Mr. Trump. So we now are living, a lot of Americans are now living inside this lie. And it means that, you know, Mr. Biden has made a couple of important points. One is that you can't really do democracy without truth. And the other is that you can't really do democracy without a sense of responsibility. I, I can't. I've lost count of how many times you and I have talked in that period. But there's one conversation that sticks out to me, and it was the end of a, a conversation where I said, uh, "Tim, you, you you can have the conversations you can have, and write the books, and go on TV, and I can do what I can do. What can most people do to inoculate themselves?" And and you you gave me a litany of things, including 
you know, joining, voting, running for your, your city council, supporting and subscribing to your local news. What can people do to inoculate those around them? Because we're finding more and more Americans are believing this lie rather than fewer of them, despite more evidence coming out. What can those of us who believe democracy is at stake do for others? How do we have that conversation? Yeah, I mean, you and I have the great luxury that we can have this conversation in front of lots of people. But what we all have to be having is the smaller conversations. You know, I was in the Midwest over the holidays. I had some smaller conversations. You have to have small conversations. You have to play the small game. You have to treat this as a kind of, for the next 10 months, 11 months, you have to treat this as a struggle where every little bit matters, where every letter to the editor, every conversation, every subscription, every supporter of a good reporter, all these things are going to matter. Every phone bank, every little thing is going to matter. We have to treat this as I think the, I think President Biden was right as a it's a sacred cause, but the sacred cause doesn't defend itself. It gets defended by a million people doing a million little things. Mm -hmm. And and when you look back at, the, back at the last election, the 2020 election, it was closer than most people think. 70 plus million people voted for Donald Trump, 70 plus million people, 80 plus million people voted for uh, Joe Biden. But actually, more people didn't vote than voted for either of them. So are the are the, the third of Republicans who believe all this nonsense, are they movable and where the attention should be? Or or should we be concentrating on something else? I mean, I think I, I think that it's interesting because I think what Mr. Biden is doing in terms of strategy is actually running on the economy. I mean, I think their idea is that the economy is doing very well and that's going to show itself and they're going to run in principle on democracy. And I think it's that principled stand, if they can hold it up above policy, which reaches the people who may disagree with him about policy, right? I think and I think that's probably the right thing to do. There is, you know, there's probably a 25 percent of Americans who aren't movable. But there is a meaningful, if shrinking, pool of people who care about the system, but who disagree with the policies. And I think those people can be reached, if not to vote for Biden, at least not to vote for Trump. At the same time, one of the things I liked about Biden's speech was that he emphasized that democracy is a good thing, right? It can't just be pitched as we're going to lose the status quo. It has to be pitched as democracy is much better than the alternative, and we can make it still better in the future. But when you think back to a place like Germany in 1933, there were some people who were fleeing. They were, they were understanding that this was really going to get very bad. And it's, it, it may be hard for people to remember how big and important a country and an economy Germany was in the 1930s. There was a real fundamental belief this can't really fail. And there are people in America yeah. who feel the same thing. There are people in America who say Donald Trump didn't really break anything. I mean, it all kind of all survived despite his efforts. What do you say in response to that? I, I really appreciate your saying that because it's, this is the kind of thing where historians, you know, we understand and we try to teach that lots of things are possible that don't seem possible. The 20th century really should have been Germany's century, but some people made some mistakes at a critical time and it wasn't. Instead, what is Germany remembered for? It's remembered for the Nazis. The 21st century, structurally, for lots of reasons, really should be America's century. But we can still choose to blow it. A few people can do a few big bad things. A lot of other people cannot care enough about the institutions. And we can blow it too. We can lose, we can lose this century. The future is open, unfortunately, both in a good sense and in a bad sense. Tim Snyder, always a pleasure to talk to you. We appreciate your wisdom.